God is on the move. And he is moving on your behalf. Amen. He's got you in mind. You've got him in mind. Amen. Praise the Lord. Revelation 6. Titled it today, The Last Gentile World Leader. What do you think that's going to be? The last Gentile world leader. <laughs> Reading from Revelation uh, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, is what we're going to be looking at today. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, I've given you uh, an outline there today, those of you here in this room, those of you who are on the, on the uh, Zoom, you could get this on your invitation to join with us. This copy was there, you could click on that and download it. Uh, this is something I haven't done in the past, but the Lord impressed me to do that this morning. Uh, this chart is laid out in such a way that you can use it. You can write notes in it on the right hand side as we go through here. And one of the reasons I believe the Lord wants me to wanted me to do this today is that He has definitely impressed me that the teaching, the preaching that I do, uh, or not just me, but what's from this ministry, is more like establishing people in the grace of God. It is, at least at this point, you folks that are coming and you're studying, you're coming into the Bible college and you come to the Bible uh, studies and et cetera, and come to the church services, you're actually being trained. It's, it's a little different than our traditional normal church. At least that's the intent of it. The intent here is that you would capture the vision. And you would see that God is preparing you. This is not a whole hum thing. God's word is life and death. And he imparts it to us as you become involved like this in teaching and training ministry to not just for not to have just personal knowledge but that it might be used by you to reach other people so that's another thing for this rough draft here you can have this and you can study it and refer to it so that you're not just hearing a message today but you're getting something planted in your heart and mind uh, so that you know and understand the word of God. So Revelation is not an easy book, but God reveals it to us as we apply ourselves or involve ourselves in it and believe him to teach us 
So I want to strongly impress you with that, that don't ever fall for the lie from the devil that I can't understand the word of God or I can't understand the book of Revelation. Today we're going to go into Daniel because Daniel and Revelation are very uh, intertwined with each other and uh, we understand Daniel more through the revelation of John in the book of Revelation. And then we understand, uh, uh, it, gets, it gets solidified, it gets planted deep. It's not just reading history or reading prophecy, but we begin to understand what God is saying. And then when we read other parts of the Bible, it just zooms in, comes alive to us. It's exciting when this happens to you. So I want you to understand this. But learning from the Holy Spirit has nothing to do with your past education, has nothing to do with your IQ, it has nothing to do whether you learn fast or learn slowly. It has nothing to do with it at all because as you seek the Lord like this and being involved in services like this, with your heart open, it's the Holy Spirit that reveals it to you. This is not something you can learn by going to class, by going to uh, a, a study of any kind from the secular world or in the secular manner. It's definitely spiritually discerned. And the only way that's possible is when the Holy Spirit reveals it to us. Say praise the Lord. So that's what he's doing today. You are a privileged people. I mean, and I am too. We're privileged here to begin to understand, especially the way our government is going and everything else and our world is going. And to know the hour that we're living in, you need to be right sharp on the tap to know what you, what is your assignment from the Lord in this day and hour. Amen. Did you know you're put here not just to hold come, but you're put here to be a lively stone in the Lord's army, Fashion. in the Lord's uh, uh uh, bride in the Lord's army of, of believers? Yes, you are. So anyway, reading that Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 and 2 one more time. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. Who was the Lamb? Jesus. 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 And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. And one of the four beasts says, come and see. Remember the four beasts? Yes. We had just studied those, right? One of the beasts says, see, the beast, beasts, these four uh, peculiar looking angelic beings are the assignment of God, he, they do whatever he bids them to do and they're so full and heavily involved with the Holy Spirit that they just move with the Lord. And so they're involved here in this vision that John had. One of the beast kings said, John, come and see. And I saw, verse two, and behold a white horse and he that sat up on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. We're going to see and prove today that this is speaking of the Antichrist. And how he's portrayed. We're going to endeavor to really uh, make it so so definitely obvious to you that you'll be uh, more honed out and attuned as you're reading to the Word of God here in Revelation and Daniel. 
to recognize it. Um, this, this is a passage, this particular white horse thing. There's so much controversy over this that it, it's mind boggling. And it's ridiculous because as we'll see today, this points to the Antichrist. It definitely describes it. I had the president of the board of the mission that I worked in for 15 years tell me that this was Jesus Christ because he's on a white horse. And it's Jesus Christ that is conquering. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ conquered on the cross. Yep. He finished the work on the cross yep. and set it up for the final work of the whole fulfillment of God's word through the church. Say praise the Lord. Amen. That is following the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit <laughs> does everything, carries it up. Now, it says that he's sitting on a white horse. What that means is he's royalty. That means he, he's, he's uh, a leader. That means he's esteemed highly. The, do you know that the Jewish people are going to look at this rascal as the Messiah? He, he is going to make peace with the Jewish nation. They'll sign a peace agreement. He's going to promise them peace. And so they esteem him as, oh, the Messiah is here. He is the Messiah. The scriptures tell us that Satan himself is able to transform himself into an angel of light. He's a master deceiver. And he is going to completely fill the Antichrist with himself. Like Jesus Christ is the full personage and image of God the Father, the Antichrist is going to be the same thing to the devil. And the Antichrist means anti or against or counterfeit and he will be a counterfeit Christ he'll be esteemed as Christ to many in the world so he's the Lord chose him as a white horse oh not a white horse excuse me and he that sat on him had a bow that's a bow like a bow and arrow that he uses a, a weapon of, of uh, warfare. And he has a crown, which proves again he's the leader. He's the, he's the supreme leader of this movement. It was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So he's going to start out with, when does he come on the scene? The tribulation. Say when the rapture happens. Yeah, during the tribulation. Right happens. after the rapture, you will begin to be exposed. Yeah. And he'll be so deceitful and so impressive and so attractive to many that. For the first three and a half years of his seven year reign, he's conquering not only with warfare, but with flatteries. He's very convincing. And <clears throat> the, the bow there proves that it's not Christ. How does it ever term Christ when it describes Christ? Sword. He got a sword. Out of his mouth. And the sword comes out of his mouth, which proves it's the word of God. Hallelujah. Okay. 
I am going to go to the rest of the passage okay. in the beginning here, down to a few more verses. Verse 3, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast. Please notice that. This is the second beast, say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Now this is showing warfare. And it's also uh, showing that taking peace from the earth and that people will kill one another. We know that the time of the tribulation period is going to be worse than it ever has been. The first three and a half years will be leading up to the worst that will ever be. And <clears throat> this writer is none other than the same. These, all of these horses and riders are just describing the Antichrist and what will follow in his reign. You're going to experience war, people killing one another, and there'll be a severity. Verse 5, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast. Notice that. We've got three of the four beasts now. The third beast said, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. All of this has significant meaning. And it's showing that the, the economy is going to be messed up. And everything's going to be out of balance. He's going to take over the economy. He's going to, uh, everything is, is for pointing to himself. He's going to present himself as God. We're to worship him. And if we don't worship him, or his image, we won't be able to buy or sell unless we take his mark, which means ownership, and put a seal upon us, either on our forehead or on our hands. Today, in this hour of technology, we, we see how that's physically possible. It's not just something that is, you know, it doesn't seem possible. And so this is the same individual and what's going to follow. This is, war is going to follow over the whole world. He's taking his, his, his uh, leadership as the last Gentile world ruler. The next ruler is not going to be a Gentile. Who is that? Say that real loud, Candace. Jesus. 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 Praise the Lord. Verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. So we see all four beasts now were involved in showing the apostle John in his trip to heaven there in this vision. Uh, showed him his vision. Verse 8, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. This is the only one that gave us the name of the writer. Death. And hell followed with him. 
and power is given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. So that's how fierce and terrible and, and, and absolutely uh, horrible those times are going to be. Now, we're speaking about death here and hell falling with it. See, this is, uh, I'm so amazed at the wisdom of the Lord when he reveals this stuff to, to me as we go along, no matter whether I learn it by studying for messages like this, but if I learn it by listening in the Bible college or, or in prayer as I seek the Lord. I'm amazed at the wisdom of the Lord when he begins to show how this word comes together. See, it's not mentioning only death. It says hell followed with it. What do you think that's for? We know that hell is a result of spiritual death. Ah, that's what it's talking about. It's not talking about just dying physically because everyone dies, right? It's talking about missing out with God. It's talking about missing out on the blessing of eternal life. Anybody that follows with the Antichrist is doomed to eternity in hell and ultimately the lake of fire. So this, this is the description of the Antichrist and of the things that will be experienced during his rule of seven years on the earth. Now, that's as far as we're going to go in Revelation today. I want to take you to the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter. And as the Lord's leads, Lord leads will, we'll look at Daniel as a full book at some time, but I don't want to do that while I'm teaching the book of Revelation. I want to just zero in on the specific points where it correlates with the book of Revelation in relation to the tribulation period and what happens after. You remember Daniel had a vision and he sought the Lord? Well, this is this is one of those visions. Daniel chapter 7, verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters, which means that he wrote it down and expressed it. Verse 2, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. And the four and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Now remember, I told you that <clears throat> the four beasts that are around the throne of God were there for uh, God's use and and uh, for His purposes, and that they represented all of creation. Uh, one was, uh, uh, you know, represented a lion, and uh, another uh, a, a bear and a, and a cow or a calf and uh, a man. They're all four different, but they represented all of God's creation. And all of God's creation is crying out to God for deliverance because the curse has, the earth has a curse on it because of man's foolishness of sinning. 
Well, see, remember also that I've told you that the Antichrist and all that he does is a counterfeit and an imitation for Christ. Well, here it's talking about four beasts too. I'm going to use four beasts, but they're going to mean little different things. But it's still a point to remember that everything the Antichrist does is to, we're going to show today that he will even manifest uh, what I call a fake uh, experience of dying and, and raise again, uh, just like Jesus did. Only Jesus was grieved. But however it was done, it's a counterfeit. And it's a depiction of, of him trying to be Christ, representing of Christ. By things like that, he proves that he is Christ. So I want you to pay particular attention and not only that, put your notes on those papers or, or study them later and get it down deep in your heart so that you can be fully persuaded of what God is saying. So looking at this, verse 2, it said, He saw a vision of the whole four winds of the heavens strive upon the great sea. The, what that's just saying is the four winds, meaning north, south, east, and west, and it also means spirit, because the Holy Spirit is is termed as breath or as wind. So in the turbulence on the great sea, okay, so the Holy Spirit is, is uh, churning things up here. And then out of that, verse 3, comes these four great beasts up from the sea, diverse one from another. You see the picture on the left-hand side. You see the picture of, of them and uh, these are the four beasts. And we'll look at them, each one of them, a little more critically as we go along. So we go to the verse four. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. And I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. And it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a heart, man's heart was given to it. You might be wondering now why I'm going through this when it looks like it really doesn't have anything to do with the book of Revelation. But it does because it's showing you the background of where the Antichrist comes from and why? Remember that the book of Revelation, especially the in regards to the tribulation period itself, what is that term other than the tribulation period? There's another term for the, that period of time. Desolation, abomination of desolation or something? Daniel's 70th week. week. Daniel's 70th week. Well, we're going to study here today with these four beasts is a part of Daniel's 70th week uh, vision. The tribulation period is the 70th week. The 70 week vision of Daniel through the 69th week of that vision tells about what we're studying today, which is what things that happen are going to happen to the Jewish nation the nation of Judah, the people of God. But it's only concerning Jews. What we're studying today only uh, uh, applies to Jewish people. Although it can be repeated as God does on right on through
through history because he's not only speaking of the present time, he's always pointing out and pointing to the kingdom of Christ, which we certainly will be involved, involved in. Amen. How many are waiting for the kingdom? Glory to God. And shine his lights. Glory to God. And walking with God. And walking where the where the where the you see it, lambs out there laying down in a field and the lions run alongside of them and they, there's no skirmish at all. Amen. You got a baby playing out in the field and the snakes running around it and it doesn't hurt it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Give me the kingdom. Amen. Amen. All right. So this the first one is like a lion. And this first one means I'm going to probably not describe it too fully because we're going to, as we go on, it's going to describe itself. But here, that's this is talking about the first slavery experience of Judah. It's talking about when Nebuchadnezzar came in and took Judea to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar as the king there. He was the first rule, Gentile world ruler. He was he was involved in that whole part of the world over there, which was all the world at that time, all of the known world at that time. And so he was the first uh, Gentile world ruler. Uh, in regards to the Jewish people. There was Nimrod before, of course, and so on, but that was before Abraham. Just talking about Jewish people here. Verse 5, And behold, another beast, a second like unto a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour and much, uh, devour much flesh. This is speaking of the next dynasty that came in and took Babylon, which is Medo-Persia, depicted as a bear. Looking at the lion right above that, you know the lion, it says, it has eagle wings. There again, it shows the supremacy of the uh, the whole world. He was just king of the world. This bear is raising up on one, on one leg, raising one leg up uh, is uh, because it's a, a coalition of Media and Persia. And the Medes were less fierce than the Persians and so it was a it was a cooperation of media and Persia, but Persia was the strongest. And so that's what the bear is showing. And the three uh, ribs that are in the mouth of of the bear are, are showing the skirmishes that they have uh, with other nations as they're battling there and devouring much flesh. So as he's devouring that flesh, he's got some ribs left over. It's amazing how the Lord shows things. I'm sure that there's a lot more to it than that. But this much he's revealed to me. So well, first we have Babylon, which is Nebuchadnezzar. Now we have Medo-Persia. It's the same Babylon, but different leader, different ruler. Persians took over. We're going to read that in a little minute about how they took over after Nebuchadnezzar was out of the picture. Now the sixth verse down here, it shows a leopard with wings on. Verse 6 says, After this I beheld, and lo, another 
like a leopard which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Uh, commenting a little more on that one, it was uh, going through the next page on, on the my site here, so I didn't see that before I rolled up. But uh, just uh, just a little comment about this: uh, he had four heads, and dominion was given unto it. The four heads means that what he it's, it's really telling about Alexander the Great. And Alexander the Great was so wise in war, warfare that he conquered the whole world in something like 13 or 14 years. And he was brilliant in strategy uh, of uh, warfare. And uh, he did it with not as many men either. He, he did it uh, by, of course, the uh, spiritual uh, forces that, that used him to do all of this. And, <clears throat> but he was also very corrupt and he died very early. He died, uh, I've forgotten the year that he died or the, the age that he died, but he died very young. And so his four heads represent his four generals that he had. And that kingdom was divided up between those four generals. One of them included leadership over uh, Israel. The land of Israel. So we go down. Now we just covered the first three beasts, just, just touched on it. We'll study them more later, later. Verse 7 says, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. And it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before and it had ten horns. So there's quite a bit to say about this beast. Now, <clears throat> what I neglected to say on the leopard is that represents Greece. Alexander the Great was a Greek. So we have, I want you to keep in mind, the children of Judah were taken to Babylon. They were told by the prophecy of Jeremiah that they would be in bondage for 70 years, right? So that's involved in the 70 week vision. That's what that's all about. So the Lord is revealing all of this to us right here. What's going to happen to the Jewish people during these 70 weeks? The six, the, everything happened to the Jewish people, including the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ in the 69th week, up to the 69th week. Then, after the 69th week, the Jewish people were scattered all over the world because this great force that's greater than all the others sacked Jerusalem, and the, which is the Roman Empire, sacked Jerusalem, and there was no place for the Jews to be. They were scattered all over the world. That was not included in the vision. The, the 70th week on that finishes that vision hasn't happened yet. That's why the tribulation period and the book of Revelation is called Daniel's 
70th week. Is that clear? Yes. That's the 70th week. Yes. To be unfolded and carried out during that tribulation period concerning the Jews. And of course, it includes the whole world, so it includes us. Amen? That's right. But it's the fulfillment of God's prophecies concerning the Jewish people. Praise the Lord. So the leopard was, was Alexander the Great or the Greek. So we have Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. We have Babylon under the Medo Persians. We have Babylon under Alexander the Great. And now we have Babylon. With the Roman Empire. What it means is it's the same kingdom. The Gentile world kingdom is the same today. God help us, but what's turned out in the United States of America has turned out to be a government of Babylon. It's wicked. It doesn't follow God. It has to stop. There has to be a change. Well, we're seeing this happen here in scripture that happened to the Jewish people. Say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read 7-7 seven, seven again. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful, terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and breaking pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. It's talking about the Roman Empire. They took over the whole world, of just uh, and speaking about the prophecy towards the end time. The ten horns represent the areas that it covered all around that Mediterranean section there and uh, to the east there. So we know that much. And they had 10 horns, that means 10 kingdoms. That means Rome had charge of all these other kingdoms. All right. Let me get this together and go to verse 8. Now we're coming to the point where the Lord tells us about the Antichrist in the book of Daniel. Verse 8. I considered the horns, that means the horns on this, this uh, <clears throat> terrible beast, the ten horns. And behold, there came up among them another little horn. You see the picture? You see the Right in the middle of his forehead, there's a little short bird over there. That's depicting the little horn. Comes out of the same beast, and it's uh, other than the ten, but it's along with the ten. It is of the ten. There came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. The great things is meaning terrible things, means blasphemous things. He's going to be speaking against God, against Christianity against Christ. It's going to be very blasphemous. He's speaking about the Antichrist. Shows him, depicts him as a man. He has the eyes or even the, the spirit of a man. Which is, of course, the old man. And a mouth that speaks terrible things. When it says the the, the he, he plucks up three horns 
by the roots. It means that on his way up to power, he overcomes three of those ten kingdoms. And we're going to read about what happens to the seven that are left. So you can see, uh, we're, this is all going to be explained scripturally by next week when you come. Because we can't finish this whole chapter today without being very, very late. So that's why I'm only going to where it comes down to the prophecy about uh, the Lord coming in on the picture. And then the rest of the uh, book, uh, or excuse me, chapter, really defines and, and tells you about these things. Which you can study until next week. That'd be great. You come all prime. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, this is something that is very exciting to me. Now, here we go. Verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and he squealed with burning fire. And a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him and ten thousands times ten thousand stood before him the judgment was set and the books were opened. Now this is definitely pointing right to even the end of the millennial reign of Christ. And this is, this is uh, inserted right in here like the Lord does. This is going to be part of this whole thing, but it, it's, it's a prophecy that's partially fulfilled during the tribulation period, but fully fulfilled at the end of the tribulation, at the, the millennial period, when the great white throne judgment happens. It's very similar to the prophecy about the day of Pentecost or the day of the Lord in Joel. In Joel, it tells us that the Lord is going to come upon people with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? But it also says that the, the heavens and the earth will vanish away. Uh, uh, the, you know, the heaven will wash away and there won't be any place for it. Well, that part hasn't happened yet. But we did experience the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost yeah. 2,000 years ago. So that was a partial fulfillment of the prophecy in the book of Joel. That's the same thing here with this. We'll experience the coming of the Lord in the tribulation period, but it won't be finished. The full prophecy won't be finished until the great white throne corrupted judgment which is after the millennial period. Praise the Lord. I hope I make myself clear on that. You see why it's important for you to know all these various points? There's not many people can tell you when is when the great white throne judgment is going to happen. Or even what it's all about. Let's look at verse 11. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the corn spake. Notice now it goes past that prophecy and carries on with the verses before talking about this Antichrist. 
I beheld then because of the voice of the great words, which with a horn spake, that's the little horn, that's the Antichrist. I beheld even till the beast was slain, that's the Antichrist, and his body or a beast was slain, that's talking about his kingdom. His kingdom is stuck, and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. How do I know that the that the the um, uh, what it says the beast slain doesn't talking about his person? Because in the book of Revelation it says that. The Antichrist was thrown into the lake of fire alive. Who is talking about the beast also represents not only him, but his kingdom. See how fine these fine points are so critical for our full understanding. And yet we don't know everything, but he shows them to us so that we can be fully persuaded about even the the order of events as they happen. And his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. That's talking about the lake of fire. Now, <clears throat> let me go to the book of Revelation. And chapter 19. You should know what we're coming up to here. And looking at verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. Do you see the difference in this verse and the first verse? that we read in chapter 6 yeah, really. about the Antichrist. Look at the difference. You can tell this is Christ. Mm -hmm. That was thinking about the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, showing that he is the king of kings. Mm -hmm. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. No doubt, this is Christ. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Lift your hand to God and praise his name and say, That's me. I'm in that army. I'm in that army. Amen. Thank you. I'm wearing a white robe. I'm coming on a white horse. I'm following the Lord. I've got a white robe on. Hallelujah. Okay, verse 15. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations. Sharp sword. There you go. So his warfare is entirely different than the Antichrist. And he shall rule him with a rod of iron. I would hope so. <laughs> and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. Thank you, what the devil does is, is during the tribulation period is termed as worse than anything that ever happened or ever will happen. And yet, what Christ does in one appearance in one day is far more than it took the took the devil and the Antichrist seven years to accomplish. When the when Christ comes and performs his way, cleaning of the swamp, <laughs> it's, it's going to take uh, 45 days to clean up the mess. <laughs> and all the birds of the of the all the vultures of the earth to come and, and eat the flesh of the dead. That is laying there, and the blood is going to run to the horse's bridle. Amen. It's a fierce wrath, all right, but it's the it's the beauty of God's righteousness. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Because He's not going to be pitiful over people. 
that choose the Antichrist over him. Amen. Yeah. He's not going to be pitiful at all. Amen. Verse 16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together under the supper of the great God. That's not talking about the Last Supper, that's talking about this terrible event of of uh, wiping out all the wickedness. Kings, mighty uh, God's supper, the great supper of God, that ye may eat the flesh. Talking to the buzzards, talking to the fowls, verse 17, Kings. saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourself together under the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and then that sit on them. And the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. That means all of those who were involved in that terrible insurrection against the Lord at the Battle of Armageddon. Verse 19, and I saw the beast, which is the Antichrist, and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with his flesh. Back to the notes. Verse 13, Daniel 7. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came through the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory, and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall be and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. That is the coronation of Jesus Christ for the millennial period and for the kingdom of God when he comes to take over the world. The last Gentile world leader has just been thrown into the lake of fire. And Jesus Christ, the victor, sets up his kingdom here on earth. Satan is going to be chained up in the bottomless pit Mm -hmm. for a thousand years and Christ is going to rule on this earth. There will be some changes like we just pointed out. Mm -hmm. The difference in the animals and the, the uh, I don't know about you know cosmic changes and things like that. But the spirit will be different. Praise God. Amen. We're not going to be involved with the spirit of this world. Glory to God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say thank you, Lord, for this understanding. All right, let's finish. Father, thank you so much for revealing to us the truth. 
And so that we know and understand what not only has happened in the Jewish nation, but also those things that will be coming, but also what happens to the world itself. And that the final ultimate outcome is peace on earth, goodwill to men, just like the angels proclaimed when Christ was first born in the city of Bethlehem. But fulfilled in its fullness on earth before going into the eternity state of being. Oh God, how wonderful it is to have that hope to have the joy and the faith that you give us and place in our hearts to believe. And the understanding that you give us. Lord, I pray for that fire. I pray for that fire that completely consumes us, oh God. Your fire, your fire that is cleansing. Your fire that is purifying. Your fire, oh God, that makes us strong. Your fire that makes us pure. Your fire, oh God, that light that leads us into victory over all of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. We pray for that, for our great United States of America that you have given us. Continue to purge, Lord. Do a quick work for your sake, because you have set up America and you've set it up to be a great nation and a light to the world. And thus far, we've been an ally to the Jewish people. Yes, Jesus. Oh God, let that not fall apart. Let not the world hiss and spit and wag your heads at the United States of America and at you. But Father God, grant us the joy and the privilege of being restored because of your blessed mercies that endure forever. We look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We place it all in your hands and say hallelujah to a great God and a great King, Jesus the Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Continue to bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.